okay, Drew, this is too much to type that you for you to understand if I type it out. So I'm just going to show it to you kind of real quick. The question is, how do you, in Ableton Live, when using the Reason Rack plugin as a VST, how do you output Kong's individual pads to separate channels in Ableton Live so that you can mix it in Ableton Live, kind of like a multi-channel mix? And uh, here's the answer. So I've got a Kong set up here. I've got beat map here just doing some drums so that I don't have to program a beat. So here it is. And you can see there we've got uh, six pads that make up this beat right now. So I'll do this using those six pads. And then if you have beats with 16 pads, you can do this process. The same process applies for up to 16 Kong pads. And this is how it works. There's a similar thing in Reason, but it, it gets a little bit different in Ableton Live. Uh, the way you want to do this is, first of all, you want to select the first pad and you want to change the drum output from master effects to be main output left, right? You're also going to want to turn off your master effects um, because you're going to be outputting discrete channels. And if you output discrete channels, you you can't send all your drums through through the effects unless you wanted to. There's another way to, if you wanted to actually send your effects to their own channels too, you could do this as well for those. But for the sake of my demonstration, your first drum, you select it, you choose main output left, right. Second drum, you're going to select it. You're going to choose main output left, right. Third drum, you're going to select it. You're going to choose output three, four. Fourth drum, you're going to select it. You're going to choose output three, four. If you see where this is going, these work in pairs. My uh, fifth drum happens to be over here on the Kong. And that's just because of this pattern, the way this, this beat map pattern works. I'm going to choose, because this is my fifth one, I'm going to choose output five, six. And my sixth drum, I'm going to choose output five, six. So if you had seven, eight, nine, ten, etc., you could just keep going for all the pads. Now I'm going to do the second step. Right now, pad one is going to output the main output one and two. Pad two is also going just to output one and two. I actually want those to be discrete outputs. I want pad one going to, to the output one, pad two going to output two, pad three going to output three, pad four going to output four, etc. And the way that that works is uh, the same way it would work on an analog console. The, it, it, you use the stereo pan knob to send it to just one side of that stereo pair. So select drum one. We've already set it to main output, but we're going to pan it hard left. Drum two, hard right. Drum three, hard left. Drum four, hard right. Drum five, hard left. Drum six, hard right. So now we've got them just going left, right, left, right, left, right. And now flip the rack around. And on the back, you've got all of these uh, jacks, the out individual output jacks. You can see that they're also grouped in pairs here. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, etc. What you may notice is where's one and two? Well, one and two is here. It's the main outputs. So it Main is one, two, then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. If you go up to the top and you open up the little triangle here to show the I.O. device that's in the Reason Rack plugin, you can drag cables up from three, four here to audio hosts output three and four, and five and six are going to go to five and six. And like I said, if you were doing all 16, you could just keep cabling these up all the way across you know, 7, 8 goes to 7, 8, 9, 10 goes to 9, 10, etc. Now, flip the rack back around and make sure that these are unchecked. You want, you don't want 3 and 4 going to the main output and you don't want 5 and 6 going to the main output. You want them to be their own independent outputs. And now if we hit play, if I've done this correctly, we should only hear this drum and this drum in our left and right earphones right now. So if I hit play, we're not going to hear the other drums for the pattern because they're not going to the main output one, two anymore. 
Ah, oh, you still hear it. Aha! We had we had the bus effects going to the master effects, and that was causing a little bit of um, I don't know what you call it, bleed. Hear that? A little crosstalk. Turn that down too. Now, now we don't hear it at all. Okay, so now we should have just this drum. Yes, yes. Nothing, 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 and nothing. Great. Okay, there we go. So that is the reason side of the setup. I'm going to close this, and I'm going to create. Audio tracks. I'll make six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to call this Kong One, Kong Two. Okay. So now for each of these we want to choose that our audio is going to be coming from an external source. And that source is reason rack plugin. And then we want the monitor source to be monitoring the input. It's not auto and it's not off. We want to monitor the input that's coming to, to this channel from the reason rack plugin. But now watch if I hit uh, play, we've got the reason rack plugin itself, main output one and two, and we've got the same exact thing happening over here because that's how we routed it. And if I try to turn it off here, well, now you can see it happening there, but it's not being sent here. And the reason it's not being sent is because of this second thing. We want to have this change to, uh, we could go pre effects or post effects, but I, uh, post effects works. Okay. So now we can turn off the reason rack plugins, main one and two. And we've got Kong one. And if we did the same thing on Kong two, change this to post effects as well. Now you can see, we still have a problem because we have our drums are hard panned because that's how they had to get panned to get out of Kong. So now in Ableton live, it's not completely straightforward to, um, convert a channel to mono, but you do it using an audio effect that they have that's in their utility folder called mono. So if I drag that audio effect here onto Kong one and I tell it, I only want to listen to the left input. And then I drag a mono onto Kong two and I tell it that I only want to listen to the right input. Now, after all of that, if we hit play, we have two center panned channels. One of those, if I mute this one, that's just our kick drum. And that's just our snare drum. Okay. And as you can imagine now, we're just going to do that process uh, a slightly bit differently, but we're going to just do that again. We're going to change this now to the reason rack plugin. Then we're going to change on three and four. We don't want to do pre effects, post effects, or post mixer. We actually want to go stereo at three and four of the reason rack plugin. And we want to do the same thing here, reason rack plugin, and we're going to go stereo out three and four. We want to monitor the input and we want to put a mono effect on both of those. And we're going to on set this one to only the left channel. We're going to set this one to only the right channel. And let's turn these on again. And now we should have four discrete drums. I'll do this with solos. Just the hi-hat. It's another type of hi-hat, I guess. Yeah. Different sounding hi-hat. And let's do pad five and six. You've got the drill now. Set that to Reason Rack plugin. That goes to five and six. Next one, Reason Rack plugin, five and six. Monitor goes to in. Mono goes on the channel. Mono goes on the other channel. Select channel five. We're going to mono the left channel only select channel six. We're going to mono the right channel only turn on the channels and there you go. Now we have discrete all the, all the pads from Kong coming in discreetly and you can mix, you can add effects. You can do all the things you would do. You can pan things. So let's, there 
There you go. You can stereo pan. So we made them mono to get them out of Kong, but that doesn't mean they have to be mono. Once we input them now into a, a Ableton stereo mix channel, we can pan them however we want. We can apply stereo effects. We can do all the things we would normally do. There you go. That is the solution.